and since I'm here, uh, let's take a look at how RGB relates to hue, saturation, brightness. All right, I'm going to animate this pointer to trace the outside edge, which is the maximum brightness, maximum saturation of each one of these hues. Now in this image here, the saturation decreases as you move towards the center. Dead center is white. But all the way out here is 100% saturated color. And I'll start at zero. As I move towards 60 degrees, I'm going to start adding the green element. When it gets to halfway through is oranges and all the way up is pure yellow. As I traverse past the yellow, move towards the solid green, then red is being removed from the color. And then if I get past pure green, then blue starts getting added into the color, moving towards pure cyan. Then the green gets subtracted, moving towards pure blue. Then red gets added, moving towards pure magenta. And then the blue gets removed, moving towards back towards pure red. Photoshop has these available modes for images and they offer 16 bits per channel and 32 bits per channel but mm, those are for very specific applications um, and when you use 16 bits or 32 bits you sacrifice a lot in the availability of filters and other things so um, these modes are for professional fine-tuning of images and for the most part I'm, I personally never use them so I'm not even going to go into them. I always use 8 bits per channel. 8 bits per channel allows for 16.7 million colors. Um, 8 bits of consecutive data on a computer is known as a byte. 8 bits has a value range from 0 to 255 decimal in integers which is usually written as 00 to FF in base 16 or hexadecimal notation and this is where web colors come from. The FF, 00 FF for magenta, that's a hexadecimal notation and it's the way the data is stored on the computer with the red being the first two digits the green the second two and the blue the last two uh, byte by byte that's how it's stored on the computer it's a very efficient way of handling things so that's why it's done that way the number of levels in a channel is the number of values for the bits um, alright one bit has a possible value of 0 and 1 so there are two values with 0 and 1 and if you raise that to the exponent of the number of bits that's how many values are available so we have 2 to the 8th is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 etc and that comes to 256 values per channel sometimes you'll see true color referred to as 24 bit color or 32 bit color well, RGB is a 24-bit color model because there are three 8-bit channels consisting of the red, green, and blue data. In a 32-bit color, the extra 8-bit channel is used for alpha information, and alpha refers to the transparency of a color. The alpha or transparency channel does not change the number of actual colors available you cannot see alpha you can only see its effect okay back to Photoshop and back to the color picker 
There's this one other section over here that's very interesting. This is the LAB colors. A lot of people just abbreviate it to LAB. The capital L stands for lightness. Okay, and you see here in the side control we have from black to white. It is a gray scale. The lab color model is probably far beyond what I can describe. Um, I understand that it, it, it kind of exists in a 3D space. Okay, the A values represent a gradient from green to this kind of red magenta. These are the A values. Now as I dial these in, you see the effect that this has on the swatch? It looks like looking through kind of a spherish setup where these are kind of these colors here are kind of in the foreground those colors back there are kind of in the background and they turn and they twist um, the B is a blue to kind of a yellow depends on the lightness I'm sure so if I dial up the lightness here we go Yeah, well, it, it, this is really fascinating, and I just wanted to cover it a little bit because there are some interesting things you can do with this color model. And, I mean, this is just a color picker. You pick colors ever, however you like. I mean, HSB is usually perfect for everything, and if you know the web color, you can just type it in and get the color that you need and then pick whatever else you need to go with it. But this model is kind of fascinating. Uh, here's an interesting shortcut. If you hold down the command key on the Mac, you can just drag these numbers back and forth uh, real quick. Doesn't matter what you use, you can click on any of them. You see you get the double-sided arrow on the hand cursor. Uh, it's kind of a slow way to do that. But it's possible. The other thing you can do is click on the number, double click on the number, and if you have a scroll wheel, you just bring the mouse outside of the box and scroll up and down. It's a pretty useful little tip. And notice how if you're altering any of these colors, but you still have the LAB or this particular um, radio button highlighted uh, this stays in the LAB color swatch and so we switch over to saturations and deal with this y you can see how the greens move around look at that that looks logarithmic and I should just drop straight to the bottom, which it does. Add the R's. At any rate, I wanted to familiarize you all uh, with all of these various different choices that you have because they will definitely come up in a lot of subsequent uh, things that I work on because you can use the component channels in images to paint on. <laughs> and uh, I will get into this demonstration in the next video. Thank you very much.